Hello, I'm back for my second video, and I appreciate you if you're here watching, and if you're not here watching, because there's like way higher quality YouTube creators out there, um, but I am going to be talking about cameras that not anyone who's making higher quality videos or whatever are really talking about, because everyone is talking about mostly the same stuff, and that's great, um, but today I'm going to be talking about the Welta Welty. Um, this model is kind of an anomaly because it has a lens that a later model should have, but it has a body um, and leather, actual leather, covering that um, the older models have. Um, I did some research, and it is, yeah, it's a little confusing, but it's an amazing, well-built camera with a very nice lens, um, and there's a lot of variations of what the lenses can be, uh, the finders can be, the shape of the camera, and they're all kind of not very far apart in make from each other. Um, anyways, very interesting. And then I also have the Vito, Voigtlander Vito 2 here, um, which is a camera that I haven't used. Uh, it was gifted to me from my friend, from their father. Um, and it's kind of just like a precious keepsake, so I'm just going to be holding on to it and eventually getting around to fixing out, fixing whatever kinks it has. Um, but it's, I've put some random leatherette here to cover up this patch because this had fallen off. So this side has some lines in it, like the old leather, and this side does not. And I also patched this little top part. So it looks pretty good, I think. Uh, and it will be a fine camera to use someday. But for now, today I'm going to talk about how to load this, how to use it, little tricks. Um, my camera does not have one of the tricks that other welties have um and there's just I, yeah there's just so many variations um that you might not even know are of the welty make um or well to make because they're just slightly off um so anyways lenses that this can have uh which are revealed when you press this super powerful eject button um pretty incredible Cameras from the 1930s. Um, I think my model, from what I can gather, is maybe from 1938 or 37. Um, but I can't find any information, even though the lens has right here. Can't really see it, but right here there's some numbers. That's the lens serial number, but they didn't really log the lens serial numbers very well. Um, I have a Steinhall München um, or Munich uh, lens, a Kassar. It's a 50 millimeter 2.9, very, very beautiful lens, um, very clean for how old it is. It's a focus just by kind of guesstimating your distance, and you twist the front knob, little front elements move in and out, and I think it's a three element lens, and it has shutter speeds of, from time and bulb all the way up to three hundredth of a second and one second, two second. Um, and so it's it's a pretty capable camera, I would say. Uh, the three hundredth of a second kind of has a little bit of a, a little, uh, that was one twenty-fifth of a second, but they're pretty accurate. But the three hundredth of a second kind of has a little bit of a resistance when getting there, because I think it's a different little part that the lens has to connect and get into. So usually what I've found is by cocking the shutter first, it's easier to twist it into the 300th of a second, and then there it goes. Um, but if, if I don't advance, um, if I don't cock the shutter, then it's kind of impossible for me to, and I don't want to force anything on here, so I just figured that out. Um, and then, so say you're shooting a roll, and you've never used this before, here's the advance knob. Um, you would advance to your first frame, and it would stop doesn't go anymore. Um, say you have your shot lined up, you would advance the shutter, um, or cock the shutter, pardon me, and then you would fire your shot, but then you might be like, oh cool, I have another shot I want to take right now, I'm ready to take it. You might go to advance the film and it won't go. So the thing is with this camera, it has a little button right here, this little silver tab, you push that in and then that allows you to advance 
And you only have to do it for one set, because if you keep holding it down, you'll advance past frame two, frame three, frame four. So you push it, turn, and then it unlocks the whatever the mechanism is um, that keeps the film from advancing. And then you turn it, and it'll stop on frame two. And then cock the shutter, fire. Um, it's just such a simple, beautiful camera. I love the knurled little knobs. I think knurling is amazing. Um, it just feels really good. I, that's like one of my absolute favorite things, and people tend to disagree. Um, but about the Leica M3 and any camera, the Leica 3C here, knurled little knobs. Um, I just think it feels like I'm using a real, a real tool to complete a task, and I don't mind. It doesn't hurt my fingers. I think my fingers are more than capable to turn a knob for a second. Um, and it really doesn't take very long to rewind a roll of 36 frames, 24 frames. Um, so, I don't know. It just takes a little bit of getting used to and not having like a little winder, which I don't really like those. I have a tendency for them to just, it feels too, like there's not enough of a, a circular motion going on sometimes and it'll slip or get stuck for a sec and then it's just awkward i like just like nice little little knob um anyways yeah this camera is very substantial camera and i highly recommend it um my model here it doesn't have a um a shutter cable um release uh like attachment on it it just has the the advance here and then the flash sync here on top. So other models will have a little place you can put a little shutter cable in, and that actually allows you. So if you advance the if you advance the camera, you take your shot. Um, if you wanted to, with the shutter cable cable release, you could cock the shutter again and fire as many times as you want. That overrides the camera's in in body in house um, double exposure stoppage. It like it just cancels it out. Um, but if you're to use the shutter button here, um, you literally only get one shot per frame. Um, so that's a pretty cool workaround, I think, that I found yesterday. Um, and yeah, so really quick, I want to get into the different lenses that this camera can have, because I was searching for them yesterday, and it's got a lot of options. So um, has a little way it can stand, like a lot of old Kodak cameras. It's pretty great. Um, and so mine is a Steinhall uh, Munich or Munchen Cassar 50mm f2.9, which is more than capable for me. Um, and I think the fastest that these lenses come in is 2.8. Uh, it goes all the way up to f16. And um, other models uh, come with, uh, the later models can come with a Welta Freital Weltar 50mm f2.9. And some people think that it's actually a remake, just like a rebadging of this exact lens. Um, and there's also a Carl Zeiss uh, Red T Tessar 50mm f3.5, which is sought after because it's a Zeiss lens. Um, but it's not as fast as this lens. Uh, so, your call. If you see one out there, you can just choose it off. Um, there's also a Schneider Kruznak, uh Xenar 50mm 2.8. That's the fastest you're going to get in one of these bodies, I believe. Um, and, yeah, there's also the 50mm 2.9 Meyer Optic. Um, and it's a red V for Weber, Justin Weber. And then uh, that one I have not tried. It's, a, it's also a Trioplan. Um, so Meyer Optic Trioplan 50mm f2.9. And it would be really fun to try all of these and do sample shots because I bet they were, maybe would be slight variances. I have no idea. Um, but that sort of thing is pretty exciting to me. Uh, so maybe someday I'll do it. And... So these cameras were made from 1935 to 1960, or the 60s. Um, the later, lower-cost models um, were Weltix and Watson. 
cameras, which is where it gets a little bit like, okay, well, here's a Watson. It looks really similar to this. Um, it says Watson on it, but it is technically still a Welta camera. Um, and there's even other models that are not Weltas. They're not front made from Welta camera work, um, like the Balda Jubilette um, or the Baldina, uh, which is more expensive than the Jubilette. And those cameras look super similar. A lot of them will have like a black bottom and top plate. Um, and yeah, so I mean, there's so many variances on cameras and thankfully because we need more cameras. So it's just great to have a lot of options out there, especially if you're excited about a folding camera and you're like, oh my God, there's like 200 variances that I can, or like different models I can choose from it really opens up a wider range of cost and uh, availability which is really fun and yeah um welta was a really uh i mean some some may say uh from articles i was reading anyway like camerpedia and stuff that they were kind of up there with leica and in the zeiss zone voigtlander and stuff um and they're a very high quality camera and I would say that by holding these two and um, when I could fire the shutter on this, uh, even just the way to open it, it does not feel like it's ready to be. Like you press a little button down here, doo, this little button that looks like a rewind button, press it and then it opens up, which is nice. It's like a pretty fine mechanism, lots of cameras use that. But once I used this Welta, I was like, oh, what? This is so amazing. Like, why don't all cameras just come, like, ready to explode out of their <laughs> bodies and uh, just get ready to go? Like, it, you're, you're ready to take a, a shot in two seconds if, you're, if your distance is set. You're just like, oh, I, I, I generally want to shoot anywhere between 7 and 12 feet. Boom. I'm just pop it open, eject ready to go. Um, that's amazing. Uh, it also has parallax correction, so it has what I'm assuming is an N for near and uh, an infinity logo. And you just pop it and it pops up to the near, and then you press this little finder down and you slide this button over and it's parallax corrected for infinity. Um, and you have to reset the shutter knob um, the shutter, the frame counter, when you're done to get a new roll going. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just, it's a really amazing camera. I would highly recommend it. Okay, now I will show you how to load it. Pretty simple process. Um, boop, 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 bitty, pop. You don't have to cut anything or do anything. It's not like the early Leica models. Um, has a little latch here on the side. You just push it down, pull it out. Here's the inside. Ta-da! And all you're gonna do is lift this knob, put your film in here, push the knob down, it's locked in, pull your film across. You could hold it down if you want. And there's going to be a little slit in this little take-up spool here. And you're going to want to find it by turning this little knob. And there it is. And you're just going to take your film leader, if I can do this looking away from everything, and try and put it right in there. There's some teeth in there. And if you get it right, you should be able to line up with these little teeth in these two little spools here. And I did it! And you just watch it go a little and close it up. And then advance it. It stopped, so I'm going to pop it. Fire one off. Still won't go like earlier, so I'm gonna push down on this little tab, and then it's free to move. Create its next little zone. Stopped. 
cock the shutter, fire it, and again. And I would say that's good for me. Um, and there you go. Now it's loaded. Now you have a nice little roll of Portra 800 in there, or whatever you're going to use. Um, yeah, these cameras are all over the internet, and there are a ton of different models. Some have a shorter little tab. Some, there's the Weltini, which sounds like a sandwich or a type of pasta, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of options. And I highly recommend using them because they're out there. They work most most of the time. Um, they're I would I would almost say they're guaranteed to work more than the electronic cameras from 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, and yeah, I I mean this one I got for nine dollars I think down across town down the street um, when I lived over there and. Yeah, there's some for 60 bucks, some for $129. The ones with the Zeiss lenses go for more, um, of course. And I just highly recommend looking around and finding whatever you can to make pictures, because what else is there to do? Um, really quick, other little options for beginning. Um, that aren't super expensive and readily available um, all over the internet. Um, also in stores. I highly recommend not just shopping online all the time if you can do that. I know that we're still in a pandemic. Um, some people believe we're not and that's fine, but it's not uh, actually. Anyways, uh, <laughs> the there are stores in almost every city, town that do have secondhand stuff for sale. Um, and I found Mostly what I come across actually are old folders um, or like Minolta SRT cam SLR cameras, um, which is pretty cool to come across with just like the, you know, the 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter 1.8, um, stuff like that. Just pretty basic camera setups at secondhand stores. Um, and one here, this is the Nikon F, and this one has... A, a waist level viewfinder, which is pretty clear and bright, and I was not expecting that at all, and I was pretty stunned when I first went to use it. And this has 50mm 1.4 um, lens on it, and it is just, I don't know, it's a very nice camera, feels substantial, feels nice. There's plenty of room to put your thingies when you're out shooting um it is just a really nice camera it's not loud it doesn't whir um when you advance the film or fire a shot it's not a intrusive camera that people are going to notice um and then a smaller version which i love this camera so so much um of an slr a lot of people like the pentax mx and I've never used it. Supposedly it's actually a little smaller than this, but this is the Olympus OM-1. Um, and this camera is so amazing. Really tiny. I have a 35mm um, f2 lens on it. Uh, and it's just a brilliant little thing. It feels more than capable to make photos that you'd want to make, that I want to make. Um, this lens focuses about four inches away from a subject so um yeah great for macro-ish photography um i don't really need to get that much closer to anything i'm taking pictures of uh and if i wanted to do that and i wanted all that detail then i would I guess shoot digital or something to get all the little hairs and fine details um but that's not really what i'm focused on so yeah this camera is also very brilliant, um, different in the sense that it has the shutter speeds are all located on this little ring around the base of the lens. Not connected to the lens though, they're connected to the body. Um, and it is actually not bad at all because you just 
uh, I mean, it's different, so it takes getting used to. It took me a little bit of getting used to, um, but it's quick to just select your shutter speed, jump to the front, focus if you need to, um, and hopefully, I mean, your aperture, my aperture is generally always set, um, but yeah, it's just boop, boop, and then you're ready, fire, and you're good to go. Um, it has a little ASA, ISO knob up here. Um, I have three versions of this camera, two black, one that I'm taking apart right now and working on, and then a silver one that I was gifted by my friend, um, and that one's another precious keepsake, um, and they don't have light meters in them. It's, somebody had went in here and taken out the actual mechanism that made the light meter connect to the camera, um, top and bottom, so I don't use light meters. It's fine, but it is interesting because now it just has this little knob that I never use because it's just there. Um, but yeah, and this camera can ha uh, use a electric winder, which is right here, um, which, you know, is fine. I don't use it so much. I was excited to get it because I've wanted a Contax G1 or G2 for a long time. And I was like, this is going to make it feel like I'm using a Contax G1 or G2, which is not true, but... It just, I had never used a, a winder for uh, making pictures, so I was excited. And it feels kind of cool to have it just kind of advance and advance and advance pretty quickly. Um, but also a little bit worrisome for me because I like the slower process. A lot of people talk about slowing down, and I agree with that. I think film is a really fun and also, to me, feels pretty necessary um, in the way of making something where it's you're not just trying to rush the process you're like in it i guess is how i would look at it it's like you're you're present you're not just blasting off shots um potentially you are depending on how you shoot everyone shoots differently um but and then if you if you carry yourself through the process or allow someone else to carry you through it um and you learn you eventually dive deeper into film where you're in a dark room and you're making, uh, developing your own film at home, and you're, uh, making your own prints in the dark room, and, like, setting all that up, and being invested in your art, I think is, just feels really fulfilling, um, so I highly recommend if you are into making pictures, shooting film, um, whatever, in whatever capacity, portraits, landscapes, street photography, uh, macro photography, um, any, anything, um, just like home home photos, neighborhood photos, whatever. It's something really special to go through the whole process and just know whether or not you like it and know it's available for you to experiment and, yeah, get what you can fully out of a process and what these little babies have to offer. Um, and then the Leica 3C, really quick. This is going to be the shortest review of Leica ever, maybe. Um, this one has a Jupiter... 8 on it, um, and it's, it's very nice, it's a very wonderful camera, um, this one has a little bit of an issue with, I have a lot of cameras with issues, with, uh, the actual rangefinder being off just slightly, but for zone focusing, it's perfect, tiny little camera, um, and, yeah, also these are really cheap, easy to find, way cheaper than Leica M's, um, and I highly recommend any camera you can get your hands on. Anyways, thanks. Have a great day. Thanks for stopping by.